Hey, 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 Speak Easy Podcast listeners. It's your host, Al Tweet Seller. And can, can we just be honest right now? There has been a lot going on and there has been a big shift when it comes to the success journey. It's been a big shift when it comes to uh, planning and, and goals. Even when we think about vision boards, there has been a real big shift. And so I'm excited about our conversation today simply because there's two parts of like there's two words that really stood out and it was journey mapping and I was like I think that's going to catch somebody's attention simply because when we think about journey some of y'all that brings anxiety I understand I know just thinking about any journey that you've been on listen through your life (laughs) if you've had a bad experience with the journey uh but I really want to dive into that in today's discussion. So I'm excited about having my guest on. Hello, Adina. How are you? Hi there. I'm doing great. Thank you so much for having me. I'm excited. (laughs) It's going to be an amazing conversation. So before we get started, tell the studio audience a little bit about Yeah, well, my name is Adina Movana. Uh, I'm a spirituality consultant. I am creator and founder of the Unity Consciousness Collective and also the uh, creator of the hashtag Not That Kind of Muslim campaign on social media. So um, I've also written a recent book. It was just actually put out on on Amazon last week. So that's very exciting. It's entitled uh, Ascension is the New Attraction. So um, there's a couple, you know, tidbits there about what I do, but I'm excited to kind of dive in a little bit more and, you know, maybe unpack a couple of these things. So yeah, I, I, th- that's me in a nutshell. <laughs> Most definitely. So it's interesting because uh, immediately when I looked at your Bible, that was the thing that stood out was the journey mapping, because of course, again, it brings so much people, so many people anxiety when they think about trying to plan, uh, trying to get past what they've already dealt with in their journey. So when you have that in your bio, what is it exactly that you're speaking to? Right. Well, yeah. So I talk a lot in my work about ascension and that's kind of the the little bit of a hot button where I'm, I'm diving into what I'm calling ascension journey mapping. And so the ascension in, a, in a, you know, in a little brief kind of tidbit is, is kind of the next level law of attraction, right? So we all heard about the law of attraction. And like you mentioned, you know, we've doing vision boarding and trying to create the lives that we want. Well, there's this concept, which about a year and a half or so ago, I started, you know, really diving into things I was seeing around, oh, the ascension process and what are these ascension symptoms and what are people going through in their lives during this time on, I guess, on earth, you know, and this is all related to our, you know, our spiritual and healing and, you know, just personal journeying through, uh, you know, healing of our trauma wounds, our generational trauma things like that, that have happened uh, to me and um, sort of like the law of attraction where we all want to uh, kind of vibrate at a higher vibrational energy frequency and we want to attract, you know, like attracts like. So this is a, this is a process of understanding how uh, are we going to, uh, you know, vibrate at those higher frequencies? How are we going to heal the things within our own self, which are actually really preventing us from achieving those results? You know, things have to happen in order for, you know, your mind to be like, oh, I'm going to attract the best, you know, ideal car or spouse or, you know, the house I want, you know, we have to actually do these, this very difficult, (laughs) sometimes, you know, we call it like the shadow work or, you know, the inner, the dark night of the soul work, you know, so people are going through these very uh, intense uh, healing processes, right? And so uh, the Ascension journey mapping is really uh, getting people started on having a plan of action <laughs> for for this agenda, right? Um, we want to get we want to get somewhere. We want to work with people or understand concepts or you know read material that's going to help us get there. So um, you know, my Ascension is the new attraction book is actually like a great place to start thinking about you know mindset, uh, manifestation, uh, understanding what's going on and why you'd want to be doing this work. And so uh, you know I carry that over into you know my 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 spirituality consulting work as well when I'm working with people on uh, you know who where, where they want to go, who they might want to be working with and what they what they can be doing on this path. So yeah, that's that's a, a little bit of an overview on it. <laughs> it's interesting too because a lot of people are just now, getting into a point where they're connecting 
their spirituality with their journey and their purpose. And when we think about previous years, when we think about way in the past, that was where it all started. Yeah. That was, that was the crust of it. Depending on what religious beliefs you may have, that is Jesus as the carpenter and yeah. the fisherman. You know, there, that's where it started. But I think over time, with expansion, with uh, technology, with all of these things, you know, work smarter, not harder, get it done faster. All of these different things have kind of poked holes, or trying to not even poked holes, kind of cut away at that. Uh, connection between the two. So I, I love that we're getting back to a place of, okay, understanding that, okay, yeah, no, there's the spirit person piece of me, there's the physical piece of me. <laughs> all of these have to work in uh, unison. Yeah. And they don't all heck for teeth. <laughs> right. It's a very holistic, you know, we're starting to move into like, you know, everything is interconnected. Everything is holistic. Like even, you know, people I talk to, you know, in order for them to see success in their businesses, like, you know, entrepreneurs and stuff, it's like, really, you're relating it back to, you know, your inner work of uh, like inner trauma and getting over limiting beliefs and things like that in order to even be successful. And those all lead back into, in some way, shape or form, your connection with, you know, your, your spiritual, your source energy, your, your God, you know, so, some of that is, is for most people, that's what I've noticed. And, you know, like you said, this time, a lot of us have taken different departures from our religious traditions. Like they're, we're disenfranchised with the church, or in my case, I come from a Muslim background. And so a lot of my uh, healing has been done like, okay, these are the rules and the religious structure and everything I've been given, but really what, you know, how do I translate this into a practical application in my day-to-day -day life and, and kind of eliminate like a lot of the guilt and shame and, you know, programming that we, we, we all really want to get out of, but people don't know how, and then they feel conflicted. And so, you know, so many people are becoming just really disillusioned with religious institutions, you know, that's another big thing. And, and, uh, we are also at the same time uh, in kind of in this, I would say, like the greatest global consciousness awakening that humanity has ever seen. It's like where I, 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 I see that with thought leaders and, you know, everyone is kind of in some sort of agreement that this is going on, um, especially with things like the mental health crisis and after COVID and, you know, high suicide rates, like we're all in this kind of disaster zone <laughs> while simultaneously you know, trying to open up into this whole, you know, uh, global consciousness, new, or, you know, planning for a better society and a brighter future, right? So um, this is all happening, like, in the here and now. That's that's part of the, co the messaging of the ascension process. It's like, this is mission critical work that each one of us are doing on an individual level in order to have an impact on the collective, you know, like, we are all you know, connected, if you if you believe in certain things around the unity consciousness, like we are having a certain understanding of how we are all having, you know, connections with, with, you know, we're not in these, you know, we're not just like physical bodies, there's an element of, you know, consciousness and connection to other, other things out there. So that is really the, the you know, the, the, the core of the work that we that so many spiritual leaders and different practitioners are doing right now yeah now what would be your response to hearing the statement healing is hard work <laughs> absolutely it's not as people are like oh it's, I want to be on my spiritual journey this is going to be a walk in the park right and it's like no you see these you know memes on social media this is the this is the dark dark work and you know really takes your life and it's like a <laughs> like you're being you know twisted and turned and you know, you're losing a lot of times, you know, or just, you know, friendships and things are, cause you're, you're really, what you're doing is you're, you're actually like bringing things out in yourself, which are going to trigger other people. And you're doing, you know, you're trying to figure out how to really uh, come from a place of like, you know, different energy, right. You're, you're getting out of old energies and into new energies. And so this is, this is very, you know, a lot of people have different journeys um, where they have to experience like massive, like, fall from grace or traumas in order to come to a realization and then they have to do the work. And so it's like this whole, it's all this whole thing that it's almost like we're put through, uh, put through the ringer. 
<laughs> in this process. So yeah, it is not easy, but it it is uh, rewarding, and it is in fact what we need to be doing. Right? That's I think that's the the common theme that I always am seeing as well. I think the rewarding piece of it too is is the part that people have to focus on because. Mm-hmm. It's like, if you look at the day to day, man, it's something that I would always do with my clients is we would do a purge, a yearly purge oh, and yeah. go through the, everything from the kitchen cabinets to the mm-hmm. trunk of the car. I mean, and there's so many things that we just kind of collect over time. And we have to think if that's what we do in the physical, then what do we do in our minds? What do we do in our hearts? What do we do in our mind, you know, in our spirit right. as we go throughout life, just enduring um, the day to day. And so actually going through and, and doing that process, even I've had clients say to me, I didn't realize I had so much stuff. (laughs) Yeah. This is like the Marie Kondo, your life, right? Yeah. Everyone is talking about like writing and, you know, there's books being written, declutter for your own mental health and, you know, for your spiritual. So it's, it is, it is something very tangible, like, you know, uh, what's happening in your mind, if you're cluttered and you got mess and, you know, that is a reflection, the inner is a reflection of the outer. And, and so, uh, yeah, there are, there are steps that we can take, you know, to, to help our minds be settled, like clutter. And that gives you stress. It gives you anxiety. Those cause mental health issues, those cause physical ailments. And so this is, again, you know, this more holistic thing and, uh, and yeah, doing small things on a daily, daily basis will get us to, to those larger, larger things, you know, like small step, baby steps. <laughs> Definitely. So what has been your most re- rewarding piece of the journey so far? Oh, my, my most rewarding piece is, uh, like connection, a like stronger connection to my intuition and like, uh, like, resolving you know a lot of times we're up here in our minds and our mental you know it's kind of like your mind is racing and you know a lot of this work that the number one thing I hear is reconnecting to your heart and your intuition and your gut feelings and then having coming from a place of strong knowing when you're you know making decisions or you're you know you're having friction with different individuals in your life but you know I used to feel like there, you know, I was very in my mind and I didn't know, and I was right. And, you know, it gives you all of these feelings, which, which drive more stress and anxiety. But, but now, you know, I feel like, um, having a solid knowing and, uh, it's like faith, right? We all, we all have a certain maybe religious thing, but it's like the reward of having faith in the divine that you're, you're being taken care of. And that if it doesn't come now, if it's, you know, certain frictions are happening, that they're going to be resolved. And so, you know, that's given me a tremendous amount of like letting go, you know, of each, uh, of each interaction or each scenario in my life. And, and just knowing that it's going to come with more ease. And then I find contentment in that in my own. So, so that relief, it's like a relief of, of anxiety, you know, that, that we can achieve. And, um, you know, that, that's, that, that would be like the, the main kind of feeling is just everything feels a little bit better. <laughs> oh, yeah. Taking it makes life, control. it makes it a, it makes it a better, yeah. Rather than just uncertainty and fear, you know, always and constantly unknowing. Oh, I'm glad that you said that too, because there are so many people that they still don't have a full understanding of just how much fear drives them. Right. Um, it holds us back. Mm-hmm. It can push us. in some instances, but it drives so much of our lives simply because um, we've been taught to fear through experience, through what we've seen other people go through. And so if somebody right now is saying, oh man, that just hit me, that like the fear piece is the piece that's really something I deal with. What would you tell them would be like the first thing that they would need to start working? Right. Well, f- yeah, the fear programming is, uh, is big, right? We're, we're all kind of uh, shaken up in w- what we're given in our families and starting from a young age. And uh, if you, you know, if you don't do this, you're not going to get that. And if you, you know, it's like, especially with, um, you know, a lot of like, we all come from different backgrounds. There's immigrant families. It's like all programmed from our childhood. And then we continues into the media and everything that we, we see. It's like the world is a scary place. And 
<laughs> if you don't do the right thing. And then it's religious programming too. A lot of times it's like, oh, if you don't do this, you're going to hell. And if you don't do that, you're going, you know, you're going to repent or you're going to forgive, you got to get your sins forgiven. And so it's, it is like every layer. So, you know, it, it really depends on the individual, like where the source of that fear programming is coming from in order to kind of work on it, you know, in order to find peace and resolve, you know, like that type of program, overcome that limiting belief. So, you know, I would just say uh, intro, like first looking within, like what's creating that fear. So one of my quotes is like, uh, introspection is the inflection point to healing. That's, that's where, uh, you know, you first look within and then you, you start your healing and then you go into things like, uh, you know, self-love, right? That's another common self-love is the healing energy for everything is another, I started making memes about a year ago. <laughs> so these are like <laughs> some on my, you know, so, so it's like, I try to keep it really simple. Cause like, you know, we, we, we see common themes like, okay, what does this mean? Self-love? Like I love myself, but you know, really like finding a space for that and, and that opening up all of these other beautiful feelings like gratitude and abundance and you know and that those are the feelings that uh raise the vibrational frequency right like there's charts out there if you go it's like fear and the, 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 these are on a certain lower vibration and we want to move upwards like kind of like we were saying earlier notch by notch into you know gratitude oh well i'm actually great you know and you kind of you move into different frequencies of emotional feeling and, you know, then you're trying to get into like unconditional love and all this stuff. But this is this is the process of like increasing our vibrational frequency, right? Right. In law of attraction and, you know, now in this ascension process. So, yeah, it, it really depends on the individual, what the source of the programming is or was, where you can kind of uh, flip the script a little bit on that and kind of, you know, feel feel good about your what it is you're doing and where you're going and and eliminate like in the case of you know, certain religious programming, like we can, we can actually have a different lens on how to view, you know, what we should be doing and the reasons for it and things like that. So, you know, it is, it's a very individual process. Like each one of us is on our own unique journey. We're all, you know, no two people are the same. And so it really starts with that first looking within, you know, finding that source of self love and, and gratitude, and then uh, kind of radiating that outward into the world as much as possible to attract more of it. And Speakeasy Podcast listeners, the reason why I, I was mm -hmm. excited about this conversation is because I still see so many of you that have questions when it comes to getting started, starting mm -hmm. over, um, getting past failures, getting past moments of shame, getting past moments of disappointment. And mm -hmm. um, there's many different avenues that you can take, but it starts with the conversation. It starts with yes. acknowledging where you are. And for still so many, it's like you, you kind of hit at it. You kind of talk about it behind closed doors. But I wanted to bring the conversation to the forefront because that's what holds us back is when we're unwilling mm -hmm. to step into whatever that healing process looks like, step into whatever that journey may be for us. And Sometimes we may look at somebody else who's healing and somebody else who's on a journey and we're like, oh, I, like, it, I can't go through that mm. because it looks like it's really difficult. It looks like it's really hard. And for that particular person, it may be. Right. Especially, yeah, when you're when you're having people are recovering from addictions or they're having challenges that are really yeah monumental and then you you get this self-limiting belief in your own head the negative self-talk like oh, i can't do that i don't want to do that i don't need to do that right it's all of any combination of of that well you know i i actually have a unique model because i'm i'm a little different than a coach right so there's there's a lot of coaches out there and there's a lot of people who can work with you i i do my work as on a consulting level so when, when I, I have a collective of different healers and practitioners and coaches and things like that. And, uh, you know, so I, I, I think everyone needs, like, you just need to find the right person at the right time for the, you know, at the, at the right place. So it's like, I'm not, I'm not always like, uh, the, you know, you, when, when I, I, I created this thing called spirituality consulting services. Right. And so it's not just like, Oh, everyone should come to me and I can get you to your, you know, I can teach you about this and get you there. It's, it's an, it's a network thing. So, um, I have different, sometimes people need, 
um, you know, di different type of coach in their life. They need, uh, you know, business coach, or they need, they need like the, just, just the next one or two steps. Like we don't need to talk about the full transformation or, you know, they want to work with a certain, they have a met, met medical issue and they want to find a resource for that. So I actually do my work based off of referring people also to different healers and different practitioners. And so it's a very holistic thing because, you know, there's no, there's no one source, one person solution in your journey, right? It's not like you're going to work with this person and it's going to be, you know, amazing. Like it could be for, for a little while, but then there's going to be other things that you need to do. And so, um, you know, I would just recommend like if someone, you know, starts reading a book and they start getting interested and then they start seeing a life, you know, there's different things that you start to do. And if you need, you know, to find the next best thing for you, then you can work with a spirituality consultant and, uh, you know, kind of identify what needs to happen. And then the next kind of two or three steps that you can take to get there. So um, I feel like it's really, um, you know, powerful work that people, you know, can start, you know, really doing, like you said, there's a lot of resistance to actually getting started or not knowing what to do, or, you know, not even wanting to like pay certain people things, you know, and so there's, there's a solution for everyone at any point uh, on their journey. And that's really what the Ascension journey mapping process is about is finding, you know, the best person at the best time at the best place for you, you know, and, and that is um, where we kind of go with some of the work that I do. I love it. And it was a perfect segue for you to let them know how they can reach out to you if they are interested in working with you or finding out more information. Yeah, absolutely. Well, um, I think the best place is my Instagram. That's where I'm starting to funnel like most of my, you know, updates and things like that. So I'm uh, at Adina Movana on Instagram or my website is uh, www.adinamovana.com. And yeah, and I also have a Facebook group. So, you know, I'm, I'm pretty much starting to get you know, any, anywhere out there, uh, they can contact me and, um, yeah, I, like I said, it's kind of, you know, a, a safe space for anyone. It's all inclusive, any different person from a, any kind of religious, cultural, uh, spiritual backgrounds. You know, I, I try and create a, a, an environment where, you know, no, it's, it's no longer that we're going to go like to our, you know, our church or a pastor to help with problems necessarily, or we're going to go to this thing. You know, we want, we want to feel like, uh, like, accepted inclusive environment a safe space to go um where you know you can you can be pointed in the right direction if you have questions like um you know a lot of my background is being muslim and so we you know one of the things that i really started out was wanting to create a safe space for people who have you know they're they're having issues that they can't go to their normal circles to have addressed you know and they start having questions that maybe put them outside of the typical you know Con, con, constructive belief system, you know, you want to start like thinking about, you know, how this works or how that works. And so, you know, that's really where my work started from was that place of uh, wanting to create a, uh, an environment where people could understand things and get the help that they needed in a safe environment and not be in there, you know, stuck in their, uh, <laughs> their own, their whatever, you know, wherever, wherever place they were at. So yeah, I hope that makes sense. <laughs> Most definitely. So making sure that, of course, Ski Easy Podcast listeners that you can get unstuck. We want you to move forward. Yeah. Every interview we do is always about you elevating in life and in business. And so with that being said, let us know how you, how this episode resonated with you by leaving us a review on your favorite podcasting platform. Uh, you can also hit me up on Instagram at Alta Visa Unmuted and DM me and let me know that this particular episode was the one that really hit home for you. With that being said, I am your host, out to these pelzer and until next time don't forget to press it out see ya <laughs>